Hello, it's Eno. This time, I would like to broadcast you, Logistics News in February 2023. Shipping market conditions, North American labor negotiations, and technology will be discussed. So, let's get started. Container Ship Scrap Market, to be active in 2023? As the ocean container freight rate market continues to decline, the container vessel scrapping market, which has been at historically low levels, is becoming more active. According to Alphalinar, a European maritime research organization, 13 vessels have already been sold for scrapping as of January 2023, and the scale of scrapping in 2023 is expected to be 350,000 TEU. There was a move to put scrapping on hold due to soaring freight rates and high charter rates. However, market trends and environmental regulations are also likely to boost the market, as new vessels are expected to be delivered in the future. Shippers take the lead in service contract negotiations for container shipping on North American routes. SC, service contract negotiations between Japanese shippers and container carriers on North American routes are already reaching a critical stage. Some shipping company officials said, We initially thought that, the drop-off point for the east coast of North America, would be around $3,500 per 40-foot container, but that may not be enough to win the tender. While the disruption caused by the corona pandemic, has subsided and the supply chain is normalizing, excess inventory on the consignee side, has become apparent, in reaction to the strong cargo movement to date. With a slack supply and demand situation, negotiations are now buyer-driven, a complete turnaround from last year. SCFI returns to pre-corona levels. SCFI, Shanghai Containerized Freight Index, of SSE, Shanghai Shipping Exchange, the leading index for container freight rates, reached 995 points as of February 10. This is the first time the SCFI has been below 1,000 points since June 19, 2020, when the new coronavirus infection spread globally. The SCFI rose to 5,000 points in January 2022 at its peak, but softened rapidly, partly due to the resolution of supply chain disruptions and a decline in cargo movement. Especially since last summer, the SCFI has plummeted. In the 2010s, the SCFI has hovered around 1,000 points, thus returning to its pre-corona pandemic level. Labor Management Negotiations Resume at U.S. West Coast Ports, first time in four months since October. Labor Management Negotiations at U.S. West Coast Ports, resumed in February after being suspended since last October. Both sides agreed to shelve for the time, being the issue of jurisdiction over the Port of Seattle, which had been an obstacle to labor management negotiations, and as a result, they have resumed. There was some concern that dock workers at both LA and LB ports might engage in a work slowdown operation, and that containers might be stalled again on the west coast of North America, but there was no such disruption. However, Discussions on terminal automation, a hot topic in the negotiations, have not yet progressed. Flexport announces Shopify app. Targeting small importers. Flexport, U.S. digital forwarder, has launched an app on Shopify's marketplace to give small U.S. online retailers access to instant quoting, booking, tracking, and customs clearance services. The newly developed app will complement Flexport's ocean freight and custom services available on Shopify's existing marketplace. Customers will have access to a number of quoting tools for parcels and less than truckload shipments, as Shopify's marketplace has not had such an international shipping app option. While Flexport focuses on smaller shippers, it said the features it has developed, such as instant quotes, for small businesses on Shopify, are applicable to larger customers as well. Now, it is time for the commentary section of this issue's news. First, I would like to report on the news of the increase in the number of scrapped vessels. The scale of scrapped container ships in 2022 was six vessels with 19,940 EU, the lowest level in 17 years since 2005. This year, it is projected that 2.4 million TEU of new tonnage will be supplied to the market as a result of the completion of new vessels. 
Thus, ship owners and operators will be scrapping, mainly older vessels in the future. Considering the overall tonnage, the volume of vessels, to be completed in 2023, is 2.4 million TEU, and the projected scrapping is 350,000 TEU. In addition to scrapping ships, shipping companies will be controlling supply, by laying up ships in dock as inactive. I believe that, the economic recovery in North America, will be the turning point for ocean freight rates, whether they bottom out now or drop a bit more. The market for marine transportation will also be closely watched. Next, I brought you news on service contract for North America. Last year, SC negotiations were more space-oriented, than freight rates, and the amount was almost always at the shipping company's mercy. However, as spot freight rates became cheaper, some shippers used spot freight rates, even though they concluded SC with four higher amounts. This year, ocean freight rates are at the same level as before the corona, or even lower in some cases. In a complete turnaround, SC negotiations have been buyer-driven, and the situation is completely different from last year. Will spot freight rates stay, at pre-corona levels or even lower? When will the North American economy recover? What will be the inventory situation in North America? Will the port stop? When the North American labor management negotiations come to a discussion about port automation, it is a good idea to be aware of these areas and take information from them. Container freight rate indices have returned to pre-corona pandemic levels. Freight rate trends by route as of February 10 show $1,378 per 40-foot container to the west coast of North America, and $2,825 to the east coast of North America. They have been softening since last year, and although the speed has slowed since January, the decline has not completely stopped. The softening has also continued for cargoes to the east coast of North America, falling $150 week on week. European routes are also continuing to fall, with prices to North Europe at $925 per 20-foot container, and to the Mediterranean, at $1,724 per 20-foot container. The North Europe-bound cargoes, in particular, continued to suffer, falling below the $1,000 mark in February. Labor management negotiations on the west coast of North America are finally moving forward. Although negotiations began on May 10th of last year, they were stopped by the jurisdictional issue regarding maintenance and repair of cargo handling equipment at the port of Seattle. There was a disagreement between the union side, which insisted that the ILWU should clearly state that the ILWU has jurisdiction over maintenance and repair at the port of Seattle and the employer side, which refused to enter into a conflict between the unions. In addition to overstocking by retailers, at U.S. West Coast ports, there is still much shifting of shipping routes, by shippers to the east coast of North America, due to concerns about labor management negotiations. Some have suggested that, labor management negotiations have resumed, due in part to pressure from parties, dissatisfied with these conditions, as handling volumes at West Coast ports have been sluggish. Fortunately, there is no congestion at the port at this time but many shippers may continue to choose to ship on routes to the East Coast due to concerns about some impact. I will keep an eye on the progress of labor management negotiations. Finally, I have app development news from Flexport on Emerging Digital Forwarder. The app announcement comes just a few weeks after Flexport announced that it had laid off about 20% of its global workforce and at the same time stated that it was looking to increase its engineering staff in 2023. The company had been hiring more IT engineers, so it seems that it is going to take a market it has not been able to capture by offering an app and service for international transportation to these platforms where these sales and purchases occur. Flexport had announced that it would focus on more than just forwarding as an integrated logistics service. By dealing with smaller retail operators within its platform, it will be able to offer international transportation services from a dominant position. I am not sure if this is Flexport's main direction, but it appears that the company will be taking a different route in developing its services. How was this issue of logistics news? 
The international industry is changing at a dizzying pace, with falling ocean freight rates, SC negotiations, and protracted labor management negotiations, on the west coast of North America. What should international shipping companies do, in these times? The most important thing is, to go out and get the information yourself, and do your own hypothesis testing. If you found this news informative and helpful, please subscribe to our channel, like us, and share on social networking sites. That's all for this time. Thank you very much. In this channel, I explain about international logistic knowledge for your understanding. I hope this video will be a good support for your logistic job. If you have any shipment from Thailand or to Thailand, please feel free to contact me with Inosan anytime. Also, I'm very motivated to keep updating these videos. If you subscribe, press good or comment anything. Well, thank you. See you next time.